Welcome to Sense of Style. I'm Stuart. Top new fragrance releases of 2024 so far. This is part one. I'm going to do a second part later this week. I'm talking about nine fragrances this time, nine fragrances later on in the week. This is a collated list of reviews. This is not my personal review. I watch a ton of fragrance YouTube. I read a lot of articles. I check for Grantica ratings. I'm going to go over all of that and collate the general consensus on the top releases so far this year. There have been so many. I have over 50, literally over 50 shorts on new releases. I did not plan to do that this year, but there have been so many, and a lot of other YouTubers are doing the same thing. So yeah, I've talked about 60 fragrances. I can't possibly go over them all. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about the ones that are the most hype, the most successful, and the biggest bombs. If you have a fragrance that's really good or maybe a little bit under the radar, I probably won't discuss it. I can't talk about all of them. It's really confusing and it's really expensive to buy fragrances now. So yeah, I'm going to talk about good fragrances, ones that are successful, so you can get your Christmas list already. Fragrance number one is Eau d'Ombre Leather. To me, the Ombre Leather line, that is the number one most popular high-quality leather fragrance on the market. And so, yeah, when you add something to the line and you make vanilla the number one accord on a leather fragrance, that's something to talk about. Uh, first, we'll talk about Fragmental. Uh, he mentioned that, you know, it becomes a skin scent after a couple of hours. I have seen at least another major reviewer say the exact, the exact same thing. That does not bode well for the performance. I wouldn't say poor performance is something that everybody agrees on, but the consensus seems to be that the projection is quite weak. And for something like Ombre Leather, I mean, you really can't have that. That's the one thing to me that made Ombre Leather really stand out over a whole bunch of other really high quality fragrances that I have. The performance seems to be an issue for most people. When it comes to the scent though, Sebastian and uh, Justin Copeland both seem to really notice the vanilla. Sebastian, the perfume guy, when he first smelled it, immediately he goes, oh my God, this is baby cat. And for Grantica voters, they definitely seem to agree with him that uh, the fragrance that smells like the most seems to be baby cat. Justin Copeland, on the other hand, another good review, another good first impression. He immediately compared it to very, two very sweet fragrances from Goldfield and Banks. So yeah, that vanilla accord that's at the top seems to <laughs> seem, yeah, this 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 move to Gourmands. So anyway, Baby Cat to me anyway is quite different, and a lot of people seem to believe that yeah, you're going away from what made Ombre Leather great, and you're going to something else. Fragrance number two is Versace Eros Energy, and at least Eau d'Ombre has been, you know, released. Eros Energy was supposed to be released on August 6th, a worldwide release, but all they did was update the website with more pictures of Channing Tatum. Uh, it is still, as far as I'm aware, not released in North America and only in very select locations in Europe. Ironically, it is released in Australia, and I say ironically because... Eros Energy, it's yellow, it's got a lot of citrus notes, it is more of a summer fragrance. And it's in the middle of winter in Australia right now, the one place where, I mean, good for them, you know, I'm glad they have it. But it's the one place where, you know, the timing is kind of weird. And the fact that, I mean, August 6th was already going to be really late for what's predominantly a summer fragrance. I know it's going to have some sweetness. It is an Eros fragrance line, you know, part of their line after all. I know for a fact that two different duty frees, one in Eastern Europe, one in Central Europe, had it available. But as far as like any major reviewers talking about it yet, what it smells like, that kind of thing, uh, I haven't seen anything. I don't want to get super negative so far. Those first two haven't been great, but Lum Ideal Parfum. Boy, oh boy. I, like, I honestly didn't see it coming. I did a couple polls. Everyone in, in my channel seemed really interested in it. And as it turns out, it has been a, a really big success. I've never seen, I haven't seen a single negative review of it. The Fragrantica rating is extremely high performance, is universally thought to be really good. It seems like it's an excellent release. 
And, uh, yeah, so it's an amaretto based fragrance. So, you know, their, their line is a nutty base, but amaretto is a nutty liqueur, an almond liqueur. So it's got a little bit of that. It has a fruity accord. It's got some leather, but yeah, it seems to be quite good. Next up, we have Sauvage Au Fort, as everybody seems to call it Au Forte. <laughs> but uh, Au Fort is a, a bomb. I mean, I, I, there really is no other way to describe it. Uh, Ashton came out with a major review on it, and everybody seems to be following suit. The projection is the problem. People don't even talk about the scent at this point, because if you cannot smell a, a really expensive fragrance, what's the point in buying it? What's the point in worrying about the scent? So yeah, Old Fault is, uh, I don't know, it just seems to have super weak projection. I mean, Dior have done water-based fragrances well in the past. There are a couple of them. It is notoriously difficult to do. And I guess they just didn't pull it off because if you can't project, if it's like intimate right from the get-go, there really is no point. And uh, yeah, it's a big bomb, so Vagil Fort. Fragrances 5, 6, and 7 are all parfums, and I've lumped the three of them together because the general consensus seems to be the same towards parfum. Unless you've got something that's very different, the prices are so high now that people kind of like, you know, they're very lukewarm, and they've been very lukewarm on Oud Wood Parfum. I, there's a lot of hostility to that one, especially because the original Oud Wood was watered down, and then they released the Parfum which was closer to what Oud Wood used to be like. And so, yeah, people are like, they're, they're kind of over it. Profondo Parfum, a little bit different, but still not super popular. If you're going to make a Parfum these days, it better be really good, much stronger performance. Um, and I guess Profondo Parfum wasn't quite different enough. Now, when it comes to Luna Rosa Ocean, Le Parfum, that's a little bit different. That's not a... A complete bomb it's not a bomb really it's just it is a different kind of fragrance the edt or sorry the edp is sweeter and that seems to be the most popular but the le parfum is a woodier spicier version that i think is a little bit more mature so it doesn't have quite the wide range of appeal a broad appeal for it because you're basically making it for older people or for people that are more a little bit more introverted so it is not a complete bust, but it's certainly not. Yeah, it's well below what uh, the popularity of the, the Eau de Parfum used to be. Invictus Aqua 2024, which is like a, a re-release of the 2016 version, from all accounts, it's either extremely similar to the 2016 version or is pretty much the same. And I think the general reaction to that is, hey, it's really, really good and people like it. But it is eight years later. There are a lot of other alternatives now. So there's, people like it. It's a good fragrance, but it's pricey. It has a limited release. Haven't heard much about it in North America. And so, yeah, I mean, it's not like the phenom that uh, a lot of people thought it was going to be. But it is a very solid fragrance. And finally, YSLY Lelixir. That's one that I tried. I got to be honest, I didn't mind it at all. But what I didn't like was, you know, they, they marketed it as having oud. There's no oud in that thing. I mean, I only did a first impression. You know, I tried it. I tried it on skin. I tried it on paper. I didn't get any oud. I didn't hate it. But the price tag is insane. And it's generally, I mean, my opinion is very limited. I'm talking about a lot of people. The general feel among most people is that, no, it's way too high priced. And, yeah, no, generally not great. One other thing about Lame Ideal Parfum, it is available at Fragrance Buy at the moment. I'm not sponsored, but I'm just telling you because it's 130 bucks, which is a really good price uh, for a new fragrance. It's already at the discounters. That's really good. So, yeah, just one other little bit of good news. But unfortunately, a lot of the new releases, yeah, with the prices so high, yeah, it's, it's really hard to come up with a lot of good news. There haven't been anything, at least not in, in the first day that I'm talking about it today, uh, nothing that's, you know, blown anyone's mind except for La Medial Parfum. Anyway, thanks for watching.